Welcome to this session about edge data processing and some typical challenges related to that in real world and especially scaled setups. My name is Daniel Eckstein. I'm one of the TMEs in the IoT business unit here at Cisco. And in that role, I'm usually in front of clients and partners taking care about data-driven architectures in the IoT space. I already mentioned the edge and edge data processing. It's very important if you ask me to first off determining what is the edge, because it depends on the context and it depends on whom you talk to uh, if it comes to their understanding of the edge. The good news is there is no right or wrong, but it depends on the context. And so the understanding of the edge might be super different if you talk to someone who is into uh, service provisioning or cloud and data center technology or sensor technology. For me, the edge is the outer control boundary of my solution. And in the context of today's session, it's Cisco routers and gateways. Why is that important uh, to have a good understanding of the edge? It is important because uh, the location of the edge in our target architecture will tell us about the characteristics of our data, like the density, the velocity, the data moves with volume and the like. And with this, it is going to give us an indication of the likely use cases we are going to see or being tasked to work on with this type of data. It could be very easy to say, let's fully centralize all of our data always. Let me give you a couple of reasons why this sometimes is not a good idea at all. I'll take you through the reasons counterclockwise and let me start with the costs. <clears throat> If you always fully centralize your data, this is going to be a costly exercise potentially. Think about storage cost. Think about cost for traffic and compute. What about privacy and data control? You may not be allowed to fully centralize your data into especially public cloud backends. If you have the time and if you are interested in this topic, just Google Schrems 2 to get to know about something the European Court of Justice recently decided on unlawful uh, data movement. Service cohesion is another big aspect. Um, or otherwise put, are you okay with being dependent, fully dependent on a backend service if it comes to whatever you want to do at the edge or not? Bandwidth, latency, and connectivity is a big thing to keep in mind um, if you want to have your service at the edge to run uninterrupted complexity for homogenization of data and data structures, and last not least, all the latencies, which became almost kind of a currency in the IoT space. And you have different latencies. There is one for the latency to take decisions based on your data or the latency by which you can provision data to an analytical uh, mechanism. So if any of what you can see here, any of the reasons apply to your use case, a full data centralization might not be the best idea. Now, what about Edge and Cisco's Edge strategy? Let me take you through that architecture from bottom to top. At the bottom, you can see things we are supposed to connect to and fetch data from. We connect to these kind of things, usually by leveraging hardware from out of the IoT business unit portfolio. And these devices are enabled with Cisco IOX. Think about Cisco IOX as a hypervisor that allows you to co-host or to host applications on this type of hardware. One possible application you could host there is a commercial of the shelf solution by the name of Edge Intelligence. This would get you started very fast because all you have to do is to install and configure it. The alternative, if it comes to IOX, is to host your own app, the, the app you created on your own. Let me show you an example architecture of what you could do uh, leveraging IOX on Cisco hardware. Let me take you through the architecture from the starting from the bottom left-hand side. You see what is called the edge, and we have an IR1101 on which we host edge intelligence. And we are leveraging edge intelligence components to connect to a data originator exposing Modbus TCP in this particular case. North of our edge, you see, for the sake of an example, an AWS-based backend. 
and right of it, you see the management solutions or the management planes to control uh, the configuration and monitoring aspects of the solution. And you can see the components are being connected by colored connectors. And the color coding of the connectors is not by chance. It's because this type of architecture strictly separates out device control plane and the control plane for the application, as well as the blue one, the data plane. Or otherwise said, the control plane for managing the device, like firmware, device configuration, device monitoring, is not interfering with the control plane for managing the application and application configuration and application operation. And both of them don't interfere with the device, uh, the data plane, using which you will allocate, transport, and provision your data. Now, how do we cope with IoT-related setups if it comes to variancy, especially at scale? This is easy to answer because Edge Intelligence, to give you this example, comes with a series or a set of predefined, pre-made, out-of-the-box usable connectors. They fulfill two main requirements. One, they will allow you to connect to the data originator using industry legacy protocols. And the second one, they will be part of the what is called device type model. Think about a template clearly describing a type of data originator. The second aspect for IoT related target architectures could be how do we automate the life cycle of, of my assets, especially at scale? To be able to do that, we have northbound connectors. Because it's not enough to only connect and acquire data, you also need to provision it to some place. And the list of uh, candidates to which you could provision it is pretty long. You can see some of the candidates listed here. Pretty much like the connectors south, the connectors north also have two main tasks they need to fulfill. The first one obviously is to establish connectivity. That's the easier part because almost of the almost all of the backends provide MQTT or MQP based connectivity. If you can't automate the lifecycle management of your IoT assets, that's a big problem, especially if you would want to scale. Hence why all of the cloud backends offer an automation API for onboarding assets and revoking privileges, for instance. That's the good news. The bad news is that the automation APIs differ between the uh, vendors. And that's the reason why we have different connectors uh, to connect to target backends, like for instance, to Azure or AWS IoT Core, not only to provide connectivity to your IoT solution, but also to integrate um, the target architecture in the automation aspect of the of the backend. If you look at uh, possible target architectures uh, from from distance, then you will make out that edge intelligence adds cloud adds a cloud agnostic aspect um, to the architecture because it will take care um, about extracting and connecting, about transforming your data as it's in transit. It will bring in a governance aspect, and at the end, it will also take care about delivering your telemetry to the designated backend. And it doesn't matter if you would want to provision into Azure, AWS, or IBM Watson. Using Edge Intelligence um, on top of IOX on your Cisco hardware, you could even create a multi-cloud setup. To conclude, let me bring you this example from Energy Box. They connect to different sensors like temperature, door open, close, energy consumption, and lightning for safe operation on premise and to target some OEE KPIs. The app is hosted on IOX enabled routers to connect to the sensors and pre processed data in, for instance, convenience stores, grocery stores, gas stations, and the like. And it's a perfect example of what customers typically do using IOX as the hypervisor to create an edge based full stack solution that goes from connectivity, acquisition, transport, and provisioning of data up to visualization and analytics. If you want to have more information about IOX and Edge Intelligence, 
don't miss to check out on developer.cisco.com.